this is Amy Cooper with Rise. We're at day two of ACE, and I'm here to interview David Benalik, who's the Chief Operating Officer of Claims at Markel. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you, Amy. Thanks for having me. So tell us, how, tell us your story. How did you get there? How did you get into insurance? Uh, so I uh, started out nowhere near insurance. I, I was an uh, uh, in, uh, attorney in private practice in, in San Francisco, in, in Chicago. I was doing a lot of uh, professional liability defense work uh, at the time, and then uh, ultimately uh, chose to leave private practice, wanting a more, you know, in-house type type role, uh, and ended up uh, finding uh, Markell in, in the Chicago area, which was looking for a senior claim attorney at the time to handle uh, various professional liability def defense matters. Including, you know, representing, you know, directors and officers of, of, of companies and, and DNO, you know, liability situations, um, uh, lawyers, professional uh, liability, malpractice, you know, matters that that sort of thing. And, and, and so, you know, joining the company, I quickly uh, acclimated to the world of insurance, you know, quite quickly, and uh, have been doing it ever since. So, what do you love about it? Uh, I would say the one thing that I really do enjoy uh, about insurance is it is constantly changing and evolving you know with with the nature of the exposures uh, shifting out there and you know no two days are, are ever the same um, being a former litigator uh, I'd like to say you know as I've been interviewing others over the years uh, who are also you know recovering attorneys like myself you know joining insurance companies is that uh, as litigators you get really good at destroying things but you can use those skill sets uh, within the insurance industry to help Help build up, you know, products and get you know great results for for your policyholders. So uh, you're you're helping build towards something, and that's actually very fulfilling and very rewarding. So outside of the office, what do you like to do? What, do you have any hobbies? Uh, so I uh, typically, on on an annual basis, uh, try to make it out to um, each of the final fours for college basketball. Uh, huge, uh, huge college basketball fan. UCLA is my alma mater. We have a, a steep tradition. In, in college basketball, so definitely, uh, I really enjoy what I would describe as kind of the camaraderie. Everyone is just ecstatic to be there, um, and, and they're thrilled to be in that environment at, the, at that moment in time. And, and ultimately, for the teams that end up prevailing, uh, it, it's just euphoria. Nothing like it. Exactly. Exactly. What's the best career advice that you've ever received? I, I would uh, share, um, you know, I, I had a mentor when I was in law school, one of uh, uh, the associate justices on the California Supreme Court, and she was an incredible mentor with a lot of great advice for me. And one of the things that she really shared with me was, you know, as you're going through your career uh, and going through law school, whether you, you know, join a law firm, whether you do, you know, transactional law or litigation, or whether you, you know, join an in-house, you know, uh, corporate legal department or work in, in business. Uh, always be looking for those opportunities that seem to be just a little bit out of reach. Um, and, 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 and raise your hand and, and actually try for it. And you'll be surprised that there'll be um, others who actually see you filling those roles long before you do. Um, and and it's, it's, it's having that, that little bit of courage to, to be able to, to, to see that and try that and, and get outside your comfort zone because that's really the only way you really grow and develop professionally. So what is the scariest interview, that question that you've ever received? So um, there's a little context around this. Um, so the year between college and law school, I had the, the great opportunity to uh, serve as an executive fellow at the California governor's office. And uh, they had you know, thousands of kids applying you know, all around the country for about 12 spots. And uh, after going through a fairly arduous application process, uh, they held interviews in uh, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Sacramento. And they rented out a, you know, a convention, you know, conference space like this. And the the uh, interview room was a, was, a, was a conference room where they had uh, the U-shaped tables, uh, and they had probably about 15 or 20 people sitting around those tables. And those individuals were, uh, you know, worked at various you know departments and agencies within the state of California at fairly high levels. And there was a little chair that sat right in the middle of that, <laughs> and that's that's where where you where sat, you where I sat as an interviewee. And they literally lobbed questions at you, left and.
and right. And I remember one of the, the big ones was, you know, Dave, and this was back in the, the early 90s, you know, um, you know uh, immigration, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, challenges around immigration and policy surrounding that. You know, what would you do to resolve, you know, this issue for the state of California if, if you could just, you know, come up with that solution and make it happen? And I, I've got to tell you, I don't know how I made it out of that interview um, alive, but apparently I, I gave them enough of a, a roadmap of my thought process and I didn't run out the door screaming that uh, uh, they, they were very, I felt very fortunate they selected me to be, to be part of that program. So I've never had an interview, you know, whether it's been some of the biggest law firms or, you know, uh, what have you, that, that's been as scary as that moment. <laughs> Um, what advice would you give to a younger professional or, or newer professional in insurance that's looking to move up or get recognized in their organization? I, I would probably, what I would recommend is um, not necessarily feeling confined by your roles or job duties as defined, you know, in, in the position that you took at that organization. Uh, really do look for opportunities to not improve just what's on your desk, but improve, you know, what's on the desk of others around you, and not even within necessarily your, your team or your department, but kind of broadly across the organization. And, you know, uh, executives and leaders are always looking for those individuals who are looking for to, to identify broad-based solutions and then looking at bringing solutions to those problems uh, without having it come from the top down. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell us about one or two innovative things that you're doing at Mark Health. Oh, we've we've got uh, quite a few things uh, go going on yeah, right right now. Um, one of the things that we've, we've been pretty you know proud of uh, recently is, uh, or a couple uh, there are a couple tracks, but one of them is we've got a uh, a claim innovation uh, team that basically was kind of built up a couple years ago, which um, is really pulling from you know various folks at different within different business divisions within claims at differing levels, uh, and then uh, working with our folks from information management and open innovation uh, and, and bringing like what I would describe as a pipeline of potential solutions to to the problems that the, the group is able to to identify and vet and then try to, to pilot those um, you know in a lot of um, larger organizations uh, IT projects are viewed as you know very large structural things with a lot of different players but but I think you know if, if the industry is going to continue to you know thrive and meet the challenges you know faced by our policy Holders or distribution channel partners, they they need companies to have a mindset of innovation uh, and, and to be able to iterate, you know, that, that sort of thing. Uh, we also have um, uh, a, a group dedicated to building, you know, uh, tools using you know data and analytics to help you know optimize or, or drive some of the processes within the broader claim organization. And and, and you see that that model is fairly successful when you embed those types of resources within a business division you know, like, like claims. Very cool. Um, tell us, because you're in a hiring position at, at mm -hmm. the company, mm -hmm. what do you look for in new hires? Has it, has it changed with technology? You know, I, I probably would say, um, you know, I'd, I'd say under, I mean, and I've interviewed hundreds of folks o over the years, is, you know, when I first started this organization, it was, there was this mindset of, well, they have, you know, folks have to have X numbers of years of experience in that particular line of business and, and that sort of thing. And, and, and nowadays, I would describe it more as, you know, the, the, a lot of the subject matter can be taught, um, or the technical aspects of the role can be taught. It's, it's identifying those with the proper skill sets that can be translated into, you know, this environment. Um, so, I mean, I'll give you, a, you know, an example uh, with, uh, you know, some of the professional liability division folks that we have with former attorneys. Uh, they're like, well, Dave, I don't, I'm not coming in with an insurance background. Well, not, neither did I, you know. Uh, but, you know, if they came from a commercial litigation background, um, they would handle breach of contract actions and have to review hundreds of pages of, you know, contract documents. And, and I said, well, that, that's a good skill set because you had to review it all, kind of, you know, synthesize it, analyze it, and interpret, you know, how it would apply in this situation. I said, very much akin to um, uh, a policy analysis and a coverage analysis, um, you know, with respect to our policyholders is the exposure and the risk of the claim is presented itself. Here, 
here's the policy, which tends to be yeah. many, many pages with lots of different you know, terms and conditions and what have you. Uh, and, and being able to, if you've got that skill set, that will translate into this environment. So we're always looking for, I would describe as those nuggets uh, and skill sets that work well uh, in, in an insurance industry. Is there any interview question that you like to ask that helps you identify some of those skills? You know, when, when I do interviews, you know, one of the key things that I uh, really probe individuals on is is trying to get a, a deep understanding of, uh, you know, what what their skill set is, but also uh, from a cultural fit. Um, culture in, is, is so important within an organization. Um, I'm very fortunate that, that our culture is actually codified uh, in something called the Markel style. It was penned by uh, one of our former CEOs about 30 years ago. And you, you see it on the walls, you see it on placards, you see it everywhere around the office. And I would describe it as if you're looking at joining the organization, it's not like you join you know, my company and you develop that culture. You always had that culture like years ago, you know, when you were in school or when you were first you know, starting at your first job, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, and, and you bring that to the table and it's, it's incumbent upon folks in my position to identify those individuals who really reflect and exemplify the culture we have at our company. Uh, and then, you know, those with the skill set and then kind of bring that together uh, and introduce them to the organization. Pretty cool. Um, is there anything that Markel is doing to help retain employees? Do you have any... Um yeah, I mean, we, we've, we've got, you know, various, you know, you know, development, you know, training programs, you know, that, that sort of thing. Um, with, with kind of the shifting nature of, um, you know, workspaces or, you know, flex, flexible work schedules, um, you know, and, 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 you know, different dress codes. I mean, there's, there, there's just a whole myriad of different things that, you know, I know it's not just our company. Other companies are, are doing it as well to really try to, you know, address the, the, the needs of, of, of kind of a, a broader uh, workforce base, um, and, and so yeah, we, we've we've definitely uh, you know looked at that, identified that. But one key theme that continues to resonate is you know what are we doing as an organization to help really develop and, and, and grow you know the talent that comes in the door? Because as I was mentioning to you, when we're going through that vetting and interviewing process and being very selective, uh, you know we, we found you know the right folks. Now it's a matter of making sure that they have a good path within the organization to continue to expand and grow as you know structures continue to change as the exposures out there continue to change and evolve so you also were speaking here today so you actually mm -hmm. spoke on a panel today can you tell us a little bit about what you're talking about today sure so um, we were uh, our focus and topic was on you know the drivers of change and, and what the future of claims you know looks like and uh, you know you, you heard a myriad of different topics up there uh, involving you know you know technology and that sort of thing but it really you know kind of breaks down to you know how have the exposures changed out there in the world uh, you know on a very macro level um, including you know how we work you know that the 1099 gig economy it's a, it's a markedly different you know in, environment than it was you know even 10 years ago uh, and, and what what types of products are brought to bear to address those particular exposures or new and evolving exposures and then on the claim side of the house what are we doing to continue to innovate and, and drive change to to put ourselves in the best position to meet the promises of those products uh, as as they're you know provided to to our customers is there anything else you'd like to say to our young professionals out there um, that are interested in moving up moving around uh, anything about the industry I, I would just say you know continue to be you know involved in organizations you know like rise uh, continue to you know grow and expand you know your network you know meet people uh, and and really keep your mind open to, to new new opportunities and new possibilities because that will really again help you uh, grow and develop you know, professionally, it's you know, and I, I I love LinkedIn, but it's not just you know how many folks on LinkedIn you, you, you're connected to. What what really drives it is is kind of the, the personal you know one-on-one -on -one interactions and, and and being able to uh, you know build upon that over time because it'll it'll build it'll grow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Great. All right. Thank you, Amy.